Business rock stars, and we're back. Now back to Scale the Wall with Tweevu. Hi there, I'm Tui Vu, broadcasting from the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. This is Scale the Wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, go to npm.com. Entrepreneurs and small business owners, as we know, always face big challenges. What they need to learn how to do is scale the wall. We'll discuss the challenges every entrepreneur faces and how they have managed to overcome them. Joining me is Justin Rosenstein, co-founder of Asana, the popular project management tool that makes it easier for teams to plan, manage, and track their work. Asana says users have now managed more than one billion tasks through that app. Justin, welcome. Thank you. So, um, congratulations on the one billion tasks milestone. Well, thank you. I, I would imagine, though, that along the road, there have been some bumps. I mean, there's a lot that's entailed in getting to um, that milestone. So tell us about some of the challenges you face and how you managed to overcome them. Yeah, test 300 million was the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that uh, success is a long series of problems. Pe people often, I, I have to laugh when I get to the end of the day and someone asks me, like, oh, how are things going? And if, if I zoom in on any particular day, and, and it kind of just gets worse, worse and worse as the company gets bigger, you're always working on problems. There's always mm -hmm. some obstacle in front of you. And, but, but as I said, the obstacle is the way. Like that, that is the path. It's just taking care of one thing after another. And so if you zoom all the way in, it almost looks like every single day is nothing but challenges, nothing but pitfalls, nothing but obstacles. But then you zoom out and you're like, oh, but the sum total of those things, I, I am making progress. So I think one of the biggest things I've learned the hard way is just to not be discouraged by those day in and day out challenges and, and maintain that larger perspective. You see, you, you talk a lot about optimizing, right? And so what is your best time-saving trick, would you say? Mm -hmm. I think getting, getting clarity of purpose and clarity of plan. So I do do a lot of things like the, you know, water or exercise or th these things that help to move faster. You do the, you do the buddying system too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also. Talk I, about that. I found that really interesting. Yeah, if, I don't know about you, but I find, <laughs> and I think different people are genuinely different, but a lot of people I know, it's, it's just hard to maintain your focus on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, when you get to really tricky decisions, it's very easy to spin in your own head. And so I try as much as possible to just not work alone. Uh, there are counterexamples, of course, but whenever possible, I think, okay, if it's a product decision, can I work with the product, the relevant product manager? If, if it's if it's some optimization question, can I on how I'm going to spend my time today? Can I work with my chief of staff to do that? And by doing that, I, I just find that pairing together, you can often move more than twice as fast as mm -hmm. you would have of, of working side by side because you're able to keep your focus. But what if you don't have a convenient buddy? You do pseudo buddying. Yes, so, so pseudo buddying <laughs> is where you buddy with yourself, um, and just basically just taking a, a journal and pretending that you're having a conversation with another person. So there, so I'll write down like a question that I have for myself, and then I will start to answer it, and then I'll write the next question, and write another. Answer. And it, it, it's a certain <laughs> requires a certain mind state to keep to keep uh, both of those and to keep a dialogue going back and forth with yourself. But that helps avoid the, the spinning on decisions. But, That's interesting. And, 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 so, so, and also, it helps to have something in writing, right? To look at, I mean, you, I mean, you could be asking a question in your head and answering yourself in your head, but you write it down for a reason, so you have something concrete to look at. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that works for you. That does work for me, yeah. But I think the, the biggest thing is people often optimize for efficiency and figuring out how can I move as quickly as possible. And then people will often spend 99% of their time focusing on how do I move as quickly as possible, and only 1% of the time thinking about which direction am I going in the first place. And I think that's a very skewed ratio because so often people move really quickly toward their destination only to discover it's not the destination they wanted in the first place. So I think the biggest time-saving thing I can recommend is making sure that you carve out the time to reflect and think carefully, what are we trying to accomplish in the first place, why do we want to do that, and what is the optimal strategy to get there? Um, what are the three biggest lessons you would have to offer for someone who is um, dealing with challenges of starting or growing a business? Yeah, I think for the first thing is to remember that success is a series of problems, that problems are inevitable and problems are solvable, and it is just so easy to get into this mindset of, of starting to think, oh, maybe this isn't working. And obviously, 
there are some businesses where it isn't working, and, you'll, and it's hard to know. But I know so many leaders that I talk to, and I, and, and I ask them, like, when did you know it was going to take off? And, and even the really successful companies, they'll be like, still waiting for that moment. <laughs> be, because you're, you're, it's, there's so much in, in the thick of, yeah. of the challenges. So just keeping that bigger perspective. Uh, similarly, I think early on in starting a company, I, know I suffered from this. I think most of the people I talk to, most leaders I talk to suffer from this at some point in their lives, is imposter syndrome. You, you get to this point where you're hiring people, they're looking to you for leadership and guidance, and, and, and part of you starts to wonder, wait, have I bamboozled them into following me? Like, what's going on here? Uh, it's, but I, I've been in rooms with just incredibly successful people and, and just bluntly asked. So have any, have any of you struggled with imposter syndrome? And every single person will raise their hand. Really? So, so knowing that has been comforting to me. Yeah. And, and, enough that I don't really experience it anymore. But there was a few years there where every time my mind would be like, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, I would then have to, as a meditation practice almost, remind myself, okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that human beings experience mm -hmm. when they're doing things like this. And so bringing it back to, okay, maybe no one knows what they're doing, and <laughs> maybe I know as much as anyone does. Yeah. And, and then leading from a place of, of there, there's a combination of, maybe I'll post my third tip, to lead from a, a place that combines both uh, deep humility and a deep meta-confidence. So what I mean by humility is I think leaders can sometimes get to a point where they think they're supposed to have all the answers and we become closed off to the opinions of advisors or the opinions of, of employees. So maintaining a deep intellectual humility of, look, no one really knows anything for certain. And so being open-minded to changes in the market, think, think, feedback you're getting from your peers, feedback you're getting from teammates is really valuable. But if you just have humility, you can start to lose your confidence. And so having this kind of, kind of meta-confidence, not confidence necessarily that you already know what you're doing, mm -hmm. but the confidence that you have the ability to develop the skills required mm -hmm. in order to navigate new challenges, in order to learn about new obstacles and be able to overcome them. And so with both humility and that kind of confidence, I think you can tackle most anything. That is a great explainer because sometimes you think that those two cannot coexist. Mm -hmm. But in that context, I can see how they can. Yeah, you need 100% of both. <laughs> Equals 200%. <laughs> Equals a multi-dimensional <laughs> matrix of virtue. <laughs> this has been a great, interesting conversation. It's been such a pleasure to meet you, Likewise. Justin Rosenstein with yeah. Asana. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, join us every Friday as we scale the wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, go to npm.com. I'm Tui Vu, and this is Business Rockstars.